<laughs> oh, what a what a long setup for a very predictable <laughs> joke. <laughs> Love it. Uh, oh, I've got this. That's a Ray Hadley sting. <laughs> All right, I've got yeah, not much to work with because we haven't done anything since the live show. So we'll start it cold, unless you want a cold open somehow. What the? You're the pro, man. I'll leave it up to you. Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast with your budgie boys, just Tim here this week and we have a very, very special guest joining me on the couch for another episode of the Body Surf Podcast. Please welcome Gareth. Hey, hey, thank you. Also known as G-Bone or G-Trumbone. I'll take it all. Are you happy with that nickname? Why not? I, I, I kind of like uh, like a little bit of cheekiness. Because you you can't you can't pick your nickname, can you? You cannot like it. You can try and shut it down, but yeah, you're right. You don't get to pick it. I um, I was called affectionately as a young bloke Rank, because my last name's Rankama, and it sounds like a gross nickname, like you're Rank, like you're a Rank, but I enjoyed it. And someone started calling me that again, and it's really nice. It's like we became friends instantly just because he was calling me a certain name. And, you know, you grow up and you, you start a, a job and you, you, you're doing a nine to five on the desk and uh, you're a pencil pusher and all that sort of stuff. And people call you Tim and you're like, who is this man? <laughs> The second you get called rank, all of a sudden there's love there. Exactly, yeah. and it, I, I, so it, I'm bringing it back. I'm I'm going to be, you know, I think we should change Owie's name to like Muffy, <laughs> and it should be Muffy and Rank in the morning. Oh, that'll catch on. And yeah, we could do a little a little breakfast show here every day. <laughs> I've pushed for that. I, I think we should do the podcast every day. I can see the billboards already. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been told by our producers and by our fans. Please do not do that. <laughs> Once a week is too much. <laughs> well, look, as a, as a fan and somebody who loves it, I could not guarantee I would listen to you uh, seven days a week. Are you talking seven days or just a Monday to Friday thing? I reckon we do Monday to Thursday, Friday's a best of show. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I think I could probably manage that much. <laughs> hey, if, if, if the people want it, we'll do it. And uh, we, we are actually wrapping up for the year. It's 2022. Amazing. We're diving headfirst into 2023. And normally what happens this time of year is we start to call it and we start to sort of phone it in a bit. And that's why you're a guest. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take whatever I can get, man. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, it's a great get, but we do seem to sort of wrap things up quite early. But I think because we did so well at the Australian Body Surfing Classics, we ride this wave a little bit longer and we, we ride it all the way into the summer and all the way into the new year. And then we do a bit of a summer series sometimes where uh, we do some weird stuff, play some old episodes, do um, a breakfast show, do a talk back radio show. Have you got any plans? Have you got any ideas that you want to pitch to Oe and myself that you would like to see us do over the summer series? Oh, look, man, I'm coming in cold on this one. I haven't prepared any material, but um, look, I think a best of the driving the joke home about us making the podium at the body, at the Australian Body Surf Classic would be really good to hear, you know, just, just snippet after snippet after snippet. I, I know that those people who didn't make the podium would really love to log in and, and check that, that kind of content out. <laughs> Maybe we do like a Comic-Con panel. Yeah. All the budgie boys on a big Last Supper desk. Obviously, our Messiah in the middle, Matthew O.E. O'Donnell. I can um, see it. Who's the Judas of the budgie boys? 
Well, look, there have been some people kicked out of the chat. I mean, there's there's one or two you can bring back, especially for people were change, chasing that, you know, that thirty pieces of silver. That's it. And uh, they, they 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 um they gave us a kiss on the cheek and they threw us under the bus and they they paid the price. I mean, there's never been a Judas from from the Budgie Boys. No. Has. There's nobody that's switched no. teams and gone away. You're pretty loyal. No, there's been a few martyrs. There's definitely been a few <laughs> martyrs. There's been a few people that were crucified Fell upside on down. Sword. Yeah. <laughs> But um, there's been no Judases. So, uh, yeah, thanks uh, for joining into the theology section of <laughs> of the podcast. That should be a new section where we just talk theology. That summer series, and theology. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll get Reverend Bill Cruz on. We'll get Father Bob McGuire. Um, Calling the big guns in. Yeah, who else could we get on? And they're, they're all keen body surfers. I've seen Father Bob McGuire really shred some holy water. That guy loves it. <laughs> his, his YouTube channel is one of my favourites. He's one of the best broadcasters in the game and it would be a great guest, but I don't think he body serves. No, no fair enough. So, Gareth, I guess uh, we want to get to know you. That's why you're on. You are one of the newest members, I think, if not the newest member of the Budgie Boys. We've had some late inclusions recently because we had to get our numbers up for the Australian Body Surfing Classic. But you joined the boys, was it early this year? Yeah, look, I think I started turning up in November. Having heard the podcast, and this is where it all came from, I, I had the invitation and, you know, just Saturday morning, gate 22, at this time, be there. I turned up and I turned up and I never saw anybody and I kept turning up and I eventually messaged and uh, Jesse was looking out for me one day. So that probably would have been November, late November, getting into December. It was really January when I started to have some regular meetups and mm. get to know the guys. And things were pretty cuckoo back then. So it would have been hard to sort of start your body surfing career in such a weird time. But we were wandering around Cronulla. We were able to meet up and do group sports and body surfing Outdoors. was included as, Socially a, as, a, as a group activity that was um, approved by the government. We weren't always socially distancing. Oh, when you drop in, it makes it difficult to socially distance. That's but, right. Uh, I once saw a surfer out at Cronulla wearing a mask <laughs> and not like a waterproof a wetsuit material. Mask, no. no, it was just an old like... Really old looking mask, you know, one that's been sitting in the glove box for a bit too long. You can never be too safe. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he was he was protecting himself by COVID, but not anyone else because he was still dropping in on everyone and injuring people that way. I mean, does salt water count as sunny? I mean, you're surrounded in the stuff. It, I think it does. It's so good for your skin. It's similar to um, sort of poor poi purple ointment like that stuff you can that stuff will get rid of You'll any illness you've got like that's cured i don't want to say things because uh, but it's cured things that <laughs> don't go into specifics scientists have spent a lot of time trying to work out how to to fix these problems and uh purple ointment will fix it right up straight away Magic. Yeah, yeah so i think salt water definitely i'm gonna say it salt water cures covid <laughs> It's the safest sport going around. The hardest thing is they're like, if you've got COVID isolated, it's like, but if you'd just let me go for a surf, I wouldn't have COVID. It's a catch-22. I'm with you there. <laughs> <laughs> we, the, you know when you say stuff like this, it gets flagged? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. It's like click New South Wales Health for actual COVID information. So you do have to be careful about what you say. <laughs> I will keep my mouth closed on that topic from now on. Now, you, you were body surfing before you met the boys. How did you find out about the Budgie Boys? How did you find out about the podcast? Did you see a billboard? Man, for years I've been doing it almost always on my own, You know, going out in between whatever else I was doing at the time, spending time with the family, working, whatever. And it was, like I said, most of the time on my own. Every once in a while you Google, have a look around, what else is happening, whether there are groups meeting up, always drew a blank, nothing happening. And I, I guess maybe back 2018, 2019, I, I, I finally started to find a little bit of a community online there. And Insta's um, kind of been a revelation for me in seeing that's where the action happens. But Body Surf Podcast cropped up then. Budgie Boys was was a big part of that, obviously with you and Owie 
running the podcast, it was a, a topic of talk a lot. Mm. And, um, you know, every once in a while you drop hints about where the meetups were. And I thought, look, it's close to home. I um, wouldn't mind coming and meeting the guys at some stage if uh, I kind of felt like the vibe was there. And look, once I did meet the guys, could not have found a more welcoming group of guys. I've been really made to feel at home, been shown some secret spots. Um, I've seen some great surfing and uh, I'm learning a lot by, by doing it. We do come across as real dickheads on the podcast, but you're right. We are actually pretty nice blokes and quite Spoiler. inviting and accepting. And yeah. if anyone wants to come and have a swim with us, get on board. But uh, where, where is home for you, Gareth? Where did you grow up and where are you living now? Yeah, look, I, I grew up on the north side of Sydney in the beaches, so at Collaroy, that, that was home. Um, lived there up until uh, we had our first child and then sort of moved near my wife's family, who are just, uh, I guess, on the outskirts of the inner west, so they're in Earlwood, and then we we sort of settle ourselves just outside there in Kingsgrove. So that's uh, fairly easy to get to a number of beaches. I can get to Maroubra, I can get to Cronulla pretty easily, I can even get to the south coast, and, and when I want to head back home to the northern beaches, it's just... Uh, pop through the tunnel and and I'm there. That's definitely one of the things I think about when trying to work out where to to set up camp, where to live. Where's a good central location? I'm here in Sutherland and it's pretty close to Cronulla. It's pretty close to the south coast. It's actually not too bad to get to the city. Um, It's not too bad to get to Maroubra, Bondi, eastern suburbs. It can be tricky here and there. But was that something you were thinking about when you were starting a family? You're looking at buying a place. Were you thinking, what's the closest beach, or was that not a real concern for you at that time? Look, if if that was my major concern, I'd be living in a waterfront place right now. <laughs> but uh, money somehow kind of uh, counted me out of that. So that money would have been the major concern in where we live. Uh, let's be realistic. Let's get your take on interest rates at the moment, <laughs> Gareth. What are, you, what are you thinking about uh, these hikes? I love it. Bring it on. We, we want to go through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I cannot stop it. I've been, I, I live a pretty luxurious life. I don't try to hide the fact. I'm a Gucci kind of guy, and, but I rent. And I, I, I think I want to rent forever. Because I look at the stress and anxiety that people go through when trying to buy a house, even once they've got their deposit and they've got the mortgage and they've got the house, and it doesn't look enjoyable. Not attractive at all. Now, why would you want to put yourself through that so you might be able to retire one day and put your feet up on your couch and go, oh, hey, that was all worth it? <laughs> It's a, yeah, it is a big ask. It's a commitment, man. If uh, if you want to be free and easy, then definitely renting is the way to go and you can be mm. where you want to be at that time. What do you think about squatting? Is that okay? Man, if you can get away with it, yeah. do it. I, I know some, some musicians who have had some, some pretty horrific squatting situations, but boy, the rent was the right price. Yeah, I've got squatters' rights here and it's uh, it's not bad. It's working out pretty well. I don't know what everyone's complaining about. Everyone's like, oh, I've got to pay rent, I've got to do mortgage. I'm like, I don't think you do. Got it, mate. <laughs> if no one knows you're here, you'll be right. So you mentioned uh, a few musician mates that you, yeah. you know. You are a professional musician. Incredibly so, yes. Um, and even more so because I play trombone, which is not the first thing you think of when you want to book a musician, but I'm getting away with it. So It would be up there for me. It would be top three favourite instruments of mine, oh. mainly because we've spoken about this before. I'm a big fan of punk and ska music, yeah. and the trombone gets featured a lot. Um, there's even been a few ska bands where the front man was a trombone player. I think, th- is it the first gold record ever was a trombonist? Like in the States, it was Glenn Miller wow. back in the 40s. Um, yeah. He, he still didn't make slaps. it alive out of the 40s. But Does it still, do they drop that at the nightclub I, still? I have many gigs where I've played Glenn Miller sets mm. and uh, mate, the 80-year-olds and the dance floor love it. Now, I don't, I don't want to get this taken off because uh, sometimes when you play music, it, it triggers something and we get cut off or whatever. But if I was to hum a Glenn Miller song, would you be able to tell me if I was correct? Or I, re- not? I reckon out of the ones that you're probably able to hum, I could probably guess them. Right, so give, give me one. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know it either. Sorry, man. Was that going to be String of Pearls? Or? <laughs> What's the big one? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, we're going to go there? Um, I, I, I think String of Pearls. Uh, How does that switch. go? 
<laughs> my head is in the wrong spot. This is your like yeah. aversion. You're I on know. Triple J right now. You're doing a cover. And I'm bombing. Of Glenn Miller. I'm bombing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the Glenn Miller cover band guy. I um, I usually have music in front of me when I do that stuff. The Glenn Miller cover band was a big sponsor of a lot of radio stations I've worked for. And that just shows you the demographic of the radio stations that I have worked for. Hard to believe, but I'm too young for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, there was a great Glenn Miller song. Uh, maybe we'll... We're not allowed to play it, are we? Yeah, it's uh, such a shame. Yeah, Copyright. I'll, that. I'll play it for you later. I'll play it on uh, on my Les Paul. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> it's the closest thing to a trombone. Exactly. All right. So, professional musician. Professional. The word professional gets thrown around a lot, especially in the body surfing community. Yeah. But what it means is that you actually make a living off your profession. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it, it's what keeps me afloat. Yeah. Um, I have had a couple of irons in the fires. Funny enough, I was a knife salesman when I first got married because I wasn't making enough off the trombone at that stage, but that was only for about six weeks. But, yeah, I mean, there's always been enough of a scene, and it depends where you are. Um, being in Sydney, there's there's always gigs of some sort, and some of them are, are not very uh, well-paying. Um, mm. You can do plenty of those ones. But, you know, you stick around for long enough and you, you do your homework and, and you can start to get into the scene. Uh, the thing about me... I think is that that I can generally get away with a variety of styles. I don't specialise and just say this. I only play in orchestras, and that's that's what happens. I, I can play, um, you know, in a rock band. I can play a little bit of jazz, big band. I can I can fit into a lot of situations. Music theatre, um, you know, th- there's always something um, that's been going on. So when when one project kind of dies or or, or um, kind of starts fading away, invariably something else pops up. So yeah, you're. That, that's all it takes if you're, you're, you're earning enough money to stay afloat. I, I feel legitimate to say that I'm a professional musician. And there is a scene. Yeah, yeah. Knife salesman, eh? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Cutco. You, Come and see me. You, you, you seem like a pretty sharp guy. Oh, boom, boom. I recognise that sound. <laughs> I wanted you to do that live. <laughs> I did not bring a trombone. <laughs> What's your favourite musical? Ooh. It's going to be really polarising because whatever you choose, um, I think out of the musicals that I played, um, funny enough, a Disney one probably stands out as being one of the most fun ones, which is Beauty and the Beast. <sighs> it's a fun one to play. I know maybe that's that's going to turn a lot of listeners off, but from a, a trombone player's point of view, I, I got a buzz out of playing that. Um, Sweeney Todd. That's good fun to play. Oh, yeah. Um, a chorus line, that's that's usually got three trombones in that one, so that's good fun. Um, the producers, enjoy that too. Mm. Funny concept as well. Yeah, it, it's a great storyline. Yeah. Noel Brooks, got to love him. Have you seen the episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm when Larry David gets cast in The Producers? There are so many episodes of that that I haven't seen. No, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> it's the story arc for an entire season. I'm not sure what number season it was. But I think you can work out what the joke is. That they're trying to... Comedy gold. They're trying to flop it deliberately. (laughs) And it just keeps on taking off. Like, isn't that just the smartest thing you've ever heard? Like, how many layers of this can you go into? It's a plan for life, really. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But Beauty and the Beast. So, would you say that is a musical about bestiality or about love? Look, as a trombonist, I don't get to see what happens on stage. <laughs> Sometimes turning a blind eye is part of the problem, Gareth. <laughs> Not touching that. <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, a lot of Disney stuff. And who, who wrote a lot of the... Like, who, who did Disney steal a lot of the stuff from? Is it Hans Christian Andersen? Oh, storyline-wise, yeah. I mean, yeah, they've, they've picked up, um, you know, many of the classic tales. I'm not an expert on that, so I'm not going to start naming all the, the you know, um, places they source the stories from. But, yeah, they, they'll take a good story and they'll make something with mm. it. And, and, you know, as I said, as a trombonist, getting a gig is, uh, is a good thing. So I'm, I'm grateful that they've, they've made a big production out of those stories. Do you, do you want to get involved in some shit movie chat or would you like to try and bypass that segment of the podcast? I, I would quite happily pass that one. My movie knowledge is well out of date. Have you seen, because you're a family sort of man, have you seen A Bug's Life? Yeah, yeah, we watched that when the kids were little. That was good fun. And I'd, I'd say the most recent movie I've seen is Maverick. Which one's that? That's oh, the Top, Top Gun. Gun. Yeah. 
Yeah, people say it's really good. I enjoyed it. I saw the original at the time when it came out, and I think it's a nice nod to that. And, you know, obviously film techniques have improved enormously since then, so some mm. of the, uh, the in-cockpit uh, shots are, are just incredible what they do. And I, funny enough, related, I've, I've got a mate who just posted a video of his Bucks party from last weekend when he went up and did some of those, uh, you know, aerobatics in a plane and uh, ended up spewing at the end of it. So, yeah. That's good, what I was going to say. Yeah. Like, yeah, Maverick, you know, it looks like a great film, but is it as funny as a few ex-footy players going into a plane and doing spins and throwing up on the footy show? Wearing a dress, yeah. <laughs> Always wearing a dress. <laughs> Uh, uh, is Maverick as homoerotic as the original Top Gun? As a white-blooded male, uh, fully heterosexual, I can't answer that question. I um, I do have plenty of friends who might be able to answer that one. I could text somebody if you like. I don't think you need to be gay to appreciate the male form. That's why I got into body surfing. Yeah, you're probably right. Look, I, I'm a guy who actually doesn't have a man crush. Maybe I haven't really? met the right man yet, but there's there's nobody that's even started to turn me. So, I, I, I don't know. I... There was a talk show in Australia, and I will not name it. I will not name it at all. I will not name it as all, at all while I queue up the hotkey. <laughs> I'm not going to name it. I'm not going to name it. I will not name this. It's on the tip this, of your tongue, but you're not going to name it. talk show, but I will not name what it. What the? I'm not naming it. <laughs> what the? I'm not going to say what what talk show it was. What the? Say good day to your mum for me. But the talk show host used to ask the question, who would you turn gay for? And this was in an era where you, you we had a do not ask, do not tell policy. That, that's true. That's, that, that was life then. But also sexuality is a spectrum and we're all on a, a vast journey of exploration. And I think that question can be asked, but in a very different way. And I don't know how to word it yet. I have a, a team of people trying to construct a sentence, trying to construct a question just to get it completely accurate. But who's a real cutie pie in the f- film industry? I thought you were going to say the body surf community for a second. <laughs> we'll go yeah. there next, but there's already... I think it's well known who, who are the cutie pies in the body surf community. Like, we've done um, a maximum top 10 hottest body surfers. I did not. Yeah, I did. I didn't make the cut, unfortunately. I was very. I think I was like eleven or twelve. I was close. But uh, we know. We know who the hot body surfers are. If you know, you know. But in terms of cutie pie male actors, who are you into? Not even in terms of being attracted to, but just as as really good performers. Oh, until you said really good performers, I think they're, they're probably separate categories. The ones who are, you know, eye candy mm. may not necessarily be the ones who can really pull off a role convincingly. Well, Rob Lowe says he wasn't taken serious because he was so good looking. And he is a, a half-decent actor. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Is he up there with your Joaquin Phoenixes? Is he up there with your Tom Cruises, who's also attractive, but is a much better actor? Who's who? Who who are you liking at the moment? I mean, it's it's so subjective. Who who do I like? I mean, up until you said, you know, who who can can carry a role really well. I mean, Matthew McConaughey. I think he would probably play me in the story of my life. I'd, I'd be quite happy with that. He'll, he'll have his shirt yeah. off all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he can transform. For a role, yeah. I mean, it's hard to kick that southern accent, but mm. I, I think he does transform. Like, hasn't he played a trans woman before in a film? I didn't see that one. I think he he and he also um, played someone who had AIDS and lost a lot of weight. Yeah, he was in Magic Mike. Yep, yep. One of my favorite films. One of my wife's favorite films. Yeah. I believe. <laughs> yeah, they're great pieces of cinema. You know, you sometimes you got to forget about the hype of a film and forget about the poster and the tagline and just watch it as a piece of art. 
I much prefer seeing a movie if I've heard nothing about it. Me too. When yeah. I saw Home Alone without knowing anything about it when it was in the cinemas back in the day a long time ago. Home Alone 1? Home Alone wow. 1. Did not know anything about it. 92? It, yeah. Yeah. Blew my socks off. Loved it. Who? John John Hughes? I think it was. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, see, I remember when Home Alone 2 came out on VHS tape and my dad loved it and would rent it for us like every weekend. So, I've seen Home Alone 2 a lot more than one, but one is amazing. But, the, but the, the, I guess my point is that it was unexpected. I, yes. I didn't know what I was getting. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that, that's, that's what you were saying about watching a movie just on face value. You ever go into the wrong cinema? <laughs> oh, I think the first time school holidays, mum had to work. She dropped us at the cinemas at Manly, and there was a double feature. Uh, I think we saw Popeye with Robin Williams, <laughs> and <laughs> you, you've seen this, right? The biggest <laughs> flop of all time, almost yeah, thanks, ruined mom. his career. <laughs> and we saw Spider Man, and I'm the older brother. I got my little sister with me. We go into the cinemas, and back in that day, they used to play a little short clip of something else beforehand and I just about wet myself going I'm in the wrong cinema mum's left what on earth am I going to do about this situation so yes I did think I was in the wrong cinema and when I was a kid living in the states we went to see a movie called Soggy Bottom USA and a friend of ours who went with us uh, popped out to the loo and then went back into the wrong cinema and ended up watching a bit of Porky's and I think she probably stayed a little bit too long Mm. so yes it's quite common to go into the wrong cinema sometimes intentional Porky's is the one where they uh, they drill a hole through the wall, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. the one. I'm, I'm talking real old school here. I don't yeah. know if anybody would have seen Soggy Bottom USA. Uh, I've seen a few Soggy Bottoms, <laughs> <laughs> but not USA. Uh, all righty, so that's probably enough, enough shit movie chat. Totally, yep. We'll top and tail that with a, a nice little opener and close. And that's a nice little segment by itself, I think. Uh, so let's get back into body surf chat. Yeah. You mentioned you lived in the U.S. Did you ever surf in, in the U.S.? Uh, I, I've lived in the States for three years. Uh, I lived in Illinois, Midwest, nowhere near the coast for two years, and Kentucky, again, nowhere near the coast for a year. Um, but when I did get to Florida, I did get into the water and tried to catch something. There was nothing to catch. So, in Florida. Uh, yeah. They're building a new radio station out in Florida soon. I'm wondering if uh, it's worth applying for a job there. Of course it is. Yeah. Good, good time to move. A big state of the art satellite radio station in, I'm guessing Miami. Could be Miami. Could be Orlando. Tampa's a pretty big place Orlando, too. Orlando, yeah. yeah. Oh, have you seen the Book of Mormon? That's a, I've got mates who played in that, but that's actually one I have not gone to see. Mm, worth, worth yeah. seeing. Just for a song about Orlando. There's a great song about Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so not much surf action in America, um, but yeah, are you thinking you might try and get to Hawaii next year? Uh, I, I'm I'm all up for travel. Love going places, and um, I'm starting to hear some of the places I have been before Cook Islands. Um, there, there's great surf there that I missed. I've been to Hawaii a couple of times, so yeah, I guess I have surfed in the states. Um, if you you know we talk about Hawaii, I, I have been on a wave there. Um, but yeah, I'd be very keen to to get head back to Hawaii and have a have another crack there. It's um, I remember taking a bus trip to try and check out the North Shore, and it was just the public bus. You you pay your fifty cents and you jump on it. Does a loop of the island. We didn't know where to get off, but there was no surf anywhere. It was just <laughs> the biggest waste of a day because we we didn't do our research. So, the, yeah. the North Shore of Hawaii. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought yeah. you meant no, the North Shore of Sydney. <laughs> I've done a helicopter tour of oh, the east nice. coast um, of Sydney, and it's it's so nice. And you never re- like it, it. Obviously, it's a different perspective of what you can do if you're just driving around. But if you've ever done the eastern suburbs, look around, which most of us in Sydney have done. When you're trying to find a spot to surf yep. in the eastern suburbs, I did it a few weeks ago with Dane Torres, and it was. Very uneventful, very unfruitful. Lots of traffic. Not even that. It was just like, what What do you do when nothing's working? But if you had access to a helicopter, <laughs> you could work it out real quick. That's the dream. Besides having waterfront mansion, you know, having the helicopter would be handy. <laughs> What's your, uh, your dream spot to body surf where you haven't maybe body surfed yet? Look, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying, like I said, I'm learning a lot by, by you know, getting to know the body surfing community and I'm, I'm really enjoying getting onto some reefs. Um, 
the consistent waves, um, you get yourself in the right spot, and quite often they're not so crowded, so you, you mm. do get a decent chance. Um, there are some waves I've heard of on reefs that I have not even found out where they are. Um, so keen to can try some of those. I'm keen to step it up bit by bit to, to build my skills, try something a little bit bigger or a little bit more adventurous. Um, I, I just love time in the water. That, that's what I'm about is, is getting in there, and I think the more that I spend time in the water, the better I, I get at it. So I wouldn't say there's one wave that is a dream wave, but, um, yeah, just looking to expand my repertoire. Mm. You went for a surf this morning. I did. Had a great time with you. <laughs> Oh, that was yesterday. Yeah, that was. I thought you were. Right. T- I thought you were having a go at me because I slept in. <laughs> you didn't in. turn up. Yeah, I did warn everyone that I probably wasn't going to come. That's fair. And I thought that was very gracious of me. <laughs> I mean, speaking of not turning up, there was a promise of a reef this morning that didn't eventuate exactly. as well. So yes, there's lots of not no shows. I think I'm the king of communication. You are, and a lot of people <laughs> probably think Tim, you talk too much. Tim, you 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 text too much. You type too much in the group chat. But at least you know what I'm doing. Yeah, you, you, you never are in doubt. Because sometimes we're guessing what people are up to. Like I said, I turned up for about a month hoping to meet you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was but there. But then when you join the group chat, you're like, okay, it all makes sense it now. Did, yes. <laughs> it's like Gareth's coming. Don't, go, don't, don't turn up. So, yeah, I had a surf yesterday with my friend Finn. You were surfing a little bit further... North, yeah. W- w- uh, the weird thing a couple about, of banks up yeah, yeah 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 so yeah you were up a bit and I'm not sure how you found us but people have always said it's very easy to spot a body surfer when there's a group of surfers and there's only say two body surfers out you're going to be able to see them a mile away especially once the wave comes you can you can see that classic line where mm. a surfer or a bodyboarder looks mm. different so would you say your surf this morning was better than yesterday I got hurt yesterday. I actually got wishboned. I got wiped out and the fins went down first. One leg one way, one the other. Had two great waves before that, but boy, that was sore. Um, So yeah, I I got some better waves today, but they were not as frequent as Mm. yesterday. So yeah, totally different conditions. Describe the surf conditions uh, yesterday. I don't really care about today because I wasn't involved. (laughs) (laughs) Really great size. I mean, what size would you say, Timmy? Four foot. Yeah, four foot. Yeah. Um, there, were, there were some smaller ones coming in between those and uh, it was offshore. There's some beautiful shape, um, mostly peeling. And the good thing about where, where we look for waves is there's a lot of choices and every place that I, I stopped and looked at was going off. So it was just a matter of picking a spot where I'd see somebody on you. It was a bit messy yesterday in terms of just sorting things out. So I was working in Cogro yesterday at your way and then um, I'm like, I've got to get back to the Sutherland office at five and i don't really know how to do the, the timing of that yet so it's like you got to leave around four thirty. i think the budgie boys meetups work best on a saturday morning mm. and that's when people can tend to get there the after after school thing um everyone's got a different schedule people that's have families yeah. and traffic kicks in so, so i i was doing some poor walkering around uh, the streets of uh blakehurst or whatever i was driving through i don't really know that area that well and then uh, i got to the sullen office i was only like five minutes late i think i got to the office five past five p.m friday afternoon was texting was trying to organize what was happening wasn't really sure if it was still on and then i got back here to get all my gear i quickly got changed into my budgies and it was blowing a gale here in Sutherland. Yeah. And I go, oh, no, this isn't good. But then we got down to Cronulla and it was still. There was no wind. It, it was perfect. There was just that little offshore wind. We got a little bit of spray back, which I always love. I love the look of it. I it love the feel of it. Yeah, too, yeah. Just sitting off the back. Some people don't like it because it can ruin waves if it's too too offshore, yeah? Yeah. yeah. But, um, or is it when it's too onshore? Onshore is definitely terrible. You get too much of any kind of wind. Yeah, that's true. Out, so, yeah. <laughs> um, it. But it was, it honestly didn't feel that windy at all. And it's probably the best surf we've seen at Cronulla for a while. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've been turning up there a lot since I've been surfing with you guys. I, I did on and off before that. And, and I, I just have found a lot of days where, you know, like I said, I, I love getting in the water and you get in. And there's there's something out there. Um, but there's been plenty of days where you look and you think there's going to be nothing. Um, this was a day where you look and you're like, anywhere you go looks fantastic. You're right. It was one of the best days I've seen at Cronulla. And it looked a little bit bigger at Shark Island, but it probably wasn't worth the swim when there was similar waves on the beach. 
That's true. I mean, the, the only advantage of, of surfing a reef like that is that, you know, like I said, you get consistency, you know, that, that every wave in that spot of a certain size is going to break in a certain way. Um, but I'm not going out there alone. <laughs> I, was in, I was in the beach on my own, but, uh, yeah, going out to Ireland, I've only been there once. Uh, and I'm not that confident to do that sort of thing alone, and I'm not sure I ever will be. And because the surf was so good yesterday... I decided to do something I don't do very often and I took out a hand plane. Good call. And it was the right call. I think a little caddy whispered in my ear, I think you should use a blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I, 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 luckily I had one in the car and I strapped it on and it was tricky because it, it had to get strapped on real hard. But <laughs> we're still on body surf chat, aren't we? <laughs> Yeah, I strapped it on real hard and trying to work out, you know, lefts and rights has always been an issue for me. And I think I'm stronger left. Me too. I, yeah. I, I'm a khaki hander and um, I enjoy riding lefts. And thankfully, a really nice left came through for me out of nowhere straight away. So my first wave of the day was an absolute screamer and impressed all the surfers out there, I think, and I, I, I was able they to... They all backed off. That's and, it. I yeah. showed them who was boss. That's the way to do it. And then I had sort of respect out there for the rest of the day, although I wasn't able to catch a wave after that. And that's because too many washy white rights were coming through and I kept trying to switch hands, but I had to take off the strap, put it on the other hand, strap it up. So I was using a hand plane that was gifted to me by a bloke called Giono in Western Australia. It's the the Hydro Blue Ray Gills plastic hand plane. And it's very pretty, having seen it, yeah. So, it looks the part, it feels the part, it rides really, really hard. I'm just wondering if I need to put a different strap on it or no strap at all. Oh, there's no harm in experimenting. Because I wouldn't have lost it yesterday. It wasn't coming off. I had I had mine ripped off my hand once yesterday and twice today, so I'm I'm really grateful that that I had a, a wrist strap on. So it's I'm, it can happen. I'm I'm such a silly muck around kind of guy when I body surf that I sort of forget there are risks to it, and because I don't use a hand plane that often, you just do whatever you want with your arms. But when you've got a plane on, you've got to be very careful because if you hit a wave or if you duck dive under a wave, it can come back and break your wrist. <laughs> yeah, there's that. And when you're on a wave, you can ruin it by, by getting the nose. Yes, yes. That's yes. all over. So, again, yesterday, I didn't have to do a lot of the work because the wave did it all for me and the hand plane definitely just held me in a great position. Yeah. And I was very happy with that first wave, as I mentioned, unable to sort of back it up with anything decent after that i'm, I'm pretty sure i saw that wave as i was getting out because i was looking down and I, I, you're right you can spot them from a mile away there was another body surfer on the north side and then you guys were on the south side so i came down to try and get some video of you and i stood there for about 10 minutes with the phone open waiting for you to get on a wave a wave and you're right you, you're very fussy about picking just the right wave and i couldn't get that video on days like that i'm a bit fussier yeah when it's just shoreys or whatever i'll jump on anything but um I go, watch this, Finn. <laughs> I'll teach you how to ride Tickler. And I went right on a wave yep. with it strapped in my left hand and I ate shit. <laughs> so it was That's a, how you do it. It was a master class of eating shit while riding Tickler. It was very entertaining. And there was a fun little bank out there and there was a little rip bowl forming and Finn was actually just surfing in the rip bowl. Yeah, he was carving it up. Where I was about what 30 meters 40 meters further out the back he had to work a lot harder than you so i was sitting there having a great time no one around me just waiting for a wave and they were coming through but yeah we we were all sort of riding very differently yesterday and i'm not sure what happened today who who rocked up again uh yeah we had lone wolf uh jesse co-captain of the club and myself so just the three of us and there was talk about some other guys that were looking for reefs and drove around and ended up at the kiosk yeah. Now, the kiosk isn't really there anymore, so I'm not sure what they were doing. They might have been at, at Bait Bay's Cafe or something at yeah. Loaf, but um, looked like cute boy Corey and Owie had a nice little breakfast date. Uh, you know, two members of this podcast. That's right. That's right. 
uh, but weren't able to... Was it senior producer? Is that Senior producer and co-host of co-host, the Body Surf yeah. podcast, having breakfast without the rest of the team. You know, I feel sorry for Woofer. Where's Wolfo. the invitation? Yeah. I, no, I feel sorry for Woofer. You know, he's, he's stuck at home with the kids... He's uh, looking for any excuse to leave the house. I thought he was at the races. But <laughs> well, yeah, he's at. The, oh, he's at. We shouldn't mention gambling, should we? Because we're trying to get some some gambling sponsors on board. Have you heard about this um, this great new gambling app? It's called Swellbet. Is this a promo? <laughs> <laughs> Swellbet, love it. <laughs> but yeah, I think Wolfo is having a punt today at the races. But yeah, you know, I feel bad because he loves a meeting. So whenever there's a meeting that doesn't involve him, I think he gets very upset because he just wants to come and uh, have a carry on. Get some FOMO. But also write it off and, and be like, oh, it's all business. It's all business. Like, you know, you, you, can, you can have a bacon and egg roll and claim it on tax. I, I believe that's what you said this morning when we had yeah. breakfast, Timmy. If, it's, if, we, if we have a quick production meeting beforehand, you know, it's all, it's all sweet. Um, the ATO are after me. Big time. I think we need an accountant to uh, to maybe sponsor the podcast. We have a, get us all out of trouble. Well, we all have roles in, within the Budgie Boys, and we do have a, a, a head of spreadsheets. We have a head of childcare. Um, have you been given a role yet? I've been dodging that bullet because I, I think sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly good support person. If somebody needs a little bit of a hand, I'll, I'll back them up. But I haven't got a specific role. It can be lonely when you've got a role and uh, everyone's looking to you to do that spreadsheet. Would you like maybe a, like a camp counsellor role? <laughs> Come and cry on my shoulder. Yeah, yeah sure. That, that, that'll, that'll do for me. You could be the chaplain. You could be uh, the budgie the boy chap- chaplain. We have got an evangelist. That's Bondi, right? <laughs> there's, a, there's a few born-agains in the, in the crew. <laughs> the, the padre. I, I could be the padre. Yeah, that's right. We we can use more of a, a an open term, um, but even the I think the word chaplain now is pretty open. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. So uh, you know, whatever you want to be, I, you know, we assigned anyone who's a bit of a a dickhead within the Budgie Boys. We assigned them bad jobs, but anyone that's a decent bloke, we'll give them a good job. I don't know whether chaplain's a good job. I haven't haven't worked that one out yet. Would you prefer to be like um, head of music, head of Head of composition. Look, there's not much call for that, I don't think, but maybe maybe a chaplain might, might get more work. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm free and easy. I think just make the role your own and you can do a woofo and just appoint you, yourself with any sort of title. Sure, I'll, I'll see what I can come up with. <laughs> woofo did not earn the role of executive producer. It takes people years of, of media training to get those sort of jobs. I do have to say, he wasn't the one who phoned me about coming on today. So. <laughs> We've given the role of guest booker to um, the most inexperienced producer, because that's the worst job. Guest booker is the worst job in the history of jobs. Just getting a call back is very difficult. Have you ever watched that TV show, Dirty Jobs? There's just a bloke going around like he's you know, digging shit, he's working at a funeral place, he's you know, cremating people, he's driving trucks, he's just doing bad jobs. Guest booker should be on that show. Guest booker is the worst job. So either Corey or Hamish will take over that role soon because I don't think Wolfo's ever booked a guest in his life. <laughs> but to be fair, that isn't really the executive producer's job. The executive producer's job is to say no when a bad guest is booked. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> What's in your floppy bucket, Gareth? Oh, man, the floppy bucket. I, I guess the longer you stay at this, the, the more that goes in there. I'm riding yuckers at the moment. Really, uh, really happy with those. Got them secondhand from Bondi. Should we talk about the, uh, the rise of yuckers? I don't know much about it, but sure. I just, just word on the street, these things are taken off. These are selling like hotcakes. I think part of it is that they're harder to get. Mm. Find, finding out where you can source them from. I don't think there's anybody local carrying them. That's right. Yeah, hard to get if you live in Australia. Yes. Yeah. So someone's um, sending them over somehow <laughs> and uh, a few people are getting their hands on them. I, I think they look amazing. They're all, all unique too, different different pores that they, they, they mix in there. Um, you know, really good look and um, they've got the shape down, Pat. Very happy how they feel and how they ride. Um, 
yeah, yeah, I, I think they're they're on the rise as far as my own experience goes. They remind me a bit of like a lifeguard fin. Um, yep. Very straight, and then, uh, but again, very, very stylish, and then very soft. The the, the soft pocket looks very comfy. Um, but a lot of people ride them with a bit of padding, especially because they have such nice padding options. Yeah, yeah, they're very sexy. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the leopard skin. Yes I, yes, I didn't choose it. So not only do they look great, but I'm guessing they also feel really good. Yeah, yeah, very comfortable, yeah. Um, easy to pop pop on, and they're, they're not going to come off. So you got the yuccas. Do you, have you ever tried any other fins? Yeah, real, real big fan of uh, Defins. I've got a couple of pair of Defins. I'm, I'm working out how to keep them straight, but I, I do like using them. And <laughs> uh, I've got a couple of old school ones too. So a pair of blades that I've got lying around, and a couple. No, I think I've got a pair of blades where I've only got one of the pair left. Um, bits and pieces. As far as hand planes go, I've got this real old school from, I guess, the seventies, made in Brookvale orange hand surfer and it, i was given that by a mate really grateful that probably started me down this journey of, of getting deeper into body surfing was when uh, i was given this um, by a friend because i used to just you know ride ride with the bare hands um all the time and uh really enjoyed the ride of this rode it twice it broke um so this hand surfer i've actually now just picked up a newer version of that but i really like using um the Where, where's the newer version made uh <laughs> I'd have to look. I wouldn't be surprised if it's somewhere in China. I, I yes. think it's somewhere yeah, overseas, somewhere in Asia, possibly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, do you still have the Brookvale one? I do. It, it's a treasured possession of mine. Very, very happy with that. Maybe one day I'll get it mounted because it's broken. It, it's not going to be used again, and I don't think a repair job would hold it together. We, but we know some people that might be able to do a restory job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be great. It's a very different material to the new one, which is like a, oh, a softer okay. plastic. So it, it's a brittle sort of thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it breaks in a different spot once it gets repaired. Would you be up for a hand surfer sponsorship? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're about 15 bucks a pop, so I don't think you're getting much for a sponsorship. But um, I would recommend them. It's, it's got a great ride. Um, so, yeah, why not? I can be the hand surfer rep. Sometimes the sponsorship's not about the product. It's about the merch. It's yeah. about the stickers. It's about the uh, the uh, the endorsement deals, those third party deals, let's, all that sort of stuff. See what we can pull together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get the package. Because um, I, I, you know, there's a picture of uh, Peter Sperling. Riding a hand surfer at Cape. So if you can top that, <laughs> I yeah, think easy. you'll be able to get sponsored by him. Yeah. Easy, right? I'd have to ride Cape with two hand surfers. That would be <laughs> amazing. I would love to see that. I would love to see anyone try and ride Cape with two of anything. Yes. Well, uh, two flippers, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Most people go out with one at Cape. Yeah. So they can hop off the rock. And it's not a left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, I actually, yeah. Uh, we went for a bit of a shop this morning and I Good bought pickup. some Manta blades. Now, these look like maybe second or third generation. What's inside them, Timmy? <laughs> I bought these from a pawn shop for, you know, what were they, 30 bucks or something? Yeah. They've left, the, <laughs> they've left their ocean and earth flipper socks in these. Now, I think these will need a wash. Yeah, I wouldn't be touching them. They look like a teenager's <laughs> socks. Like, they're crusty as, so that's disgusting. Um, I will soak them and see if I can restore them, or I might just chuck them out because I do not want to get tinnia. I think it could be a, a, like a prize on the podcast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we do give away some shit gear sometimes, but that would be very, very low of us. So... These are a lot softer than I remember them being. When I got my first pair of blades, they had more of a straight blade um, sort of shape and then a very, very hard bit of rubber at the back there. This feels nice and soft. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to ever ride these, but I just do like the look of them and, and might pop them up for display. I'm turning this place into the Finn Museum. Uh, do you follow the Finn I Museum? Do. Oh, oh my god, yeah. yeah, that's some good content. Th that would make me turn. <laughs> <laughs> Call back to Rove McManus, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, okay. So you, you've got a bit of gear in your floppy bucket. You, you've 
<laughs> you've replaced. I'm surprised you replaced the the wave surfer, but I I like your um, enthusiasm. Yeah. Well, and even just brand loyalty as well. You know, you you are very loyal to to the brand, and um, they are a good brand, and they're doing great things. So. Well, to, be, to be honest, what I ride most these days is the timber war hand plane. And, yeah. And that, that's, um, you know, goes anywhere. I've had it on reefs. I've had it. How did um, you purchase that one? Uh, that, that was just online. Again, um, just, just a bit of research when I started to, to use that old orange one and, and seeing what else was around and, you know, bumped into the podcast, bumped into Insta and started to see, um, you know, that the war had a bit of a presence and they were local. I thought, look, let's let's give it a try. And that's when I picked up the Defins as a part of a package. So... Um, it's probably been two years that I've, I've had those and, uh, yeah, really happy with the timber. And I've recently picked up, uh, one of, one of the bad fish, the plastic ones too, mm. got it in black and, um, yeah, had that out yesterday and, and used the timber today. I'm real happy with both. Did you use the, uh, the mate's rates code word? I, um, I, <laughs> full disclosure, I actually got a discount on the, uh, the, the, bad fish because i'd put in a submission of art for the australian body surf classic uh, and um no surprise i didn't win that I, I had confidence in myself that maybe i would because in year six we had a competition to see who could draw the picture for the uh, the cover of the christmas carols book and i won that uh, that was six white boomers that i drew but uh yeah unlucky this time mm, i once won a an art competition i've won a few actually i was actually very close to going to art school but um, I was too radical. Oh, wow. In the art world, <laughs> yeah. right? That's, yeah. yeah, too radical. For My art. favorite artist is um, Marcel Duchamp. It's not the poster guy, is it? No, that, like, that's Andy Warhol. But Marcel Duchamp, and I've told this story on the Body, Body Surf Podcast, he, his most famous artwork is a urinal. So he just put up a urinal in an art gallery and he said, that's art. And then Andy Warhol pissed in it. But yeah, Andy Warhol did a lot of pop art, did the yep. posters and all yep. that sort of stuff. But uh, very, very close to going to art school. Uh, do love art. But I won an art contest uh, at my dentist to to get on the dentist calendar. So my submission was for January um, because my birthday's in January. I drew the Harbour Bridge and on the Harbour Bridge it said January and then fireworks were going off and then there was boats in the harbour. I think there was someone swimming in the harbour. There was someone floating on something. Wow. And uh, I think I was about 10 years old and that got in the the, the dentist calendar. <laughs> you should post that on the Insta page or maybe Facebook. <laughs> uh, my mum might still have a copy of it, yeah. Um, but how good was the art for the Australian Body Surf Classic? I thought that was so a who, great logo. Who, who won that in the end, yeah. yeah I, I, anonymous. I, I, anonymous maybe? Yeah, was I, it, I can't remember. Was it Banksy maybe? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who is Banksy even? <laughs> So yeah, here it is. Yeah. Here, yeah, very, very happy with that design because uh, a lot of people have a go at us because we're we're so critical, we're so judgmental, and we're so opinionated. But I thought that was kind of what we were meant to do here. <laughs> I mean that that one's gone on the 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 trophy, even that's perpetual, right? So that's that's going to be the ongoing one. It's not just for this year. Yeah, that's true. So um, what an honour to to win that prize. I don't know who did it, but well done, Banksy. But uh, I. <laughs> I really like the shirt. I love that it's in navy as well. You know, we took a vote. Democracy works. I did have two votes myself. Cause I had a few. <laughs> but I also did the same thing in the federal election. I voted a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for the loser, though. Yeah, we got the tax office after us. We got, <laughs> got YouTube copyright department after us. And now you've got the electoral department. I know we have a few catchphrases, you know, halloop and, you know, it's always overhead, that sort of stuff. But we also have another catchphrase here on the Body Surf podcast, and it's keep voting liberal. <laughs> I'm a swinging voter, Timmy, so yes, I have voted Liberal sometimes. I think you have to, in this country, with our politicians, be a swinging voter. I, I, I think having the one party in for too long is a bad idea. Yeah, someone once described it as a metaphor, as if, if, if you were trying to renovate a bathroom and you gave someone a couple of years and then a new mob came in and they're like, oh, no, nah, this bathroom, the toilet's too Let's big. Start again. And that's what a country is like to run. <laughs> that's why we never get anywhere. A lot of wasted money. But again, we need to have these systems in place for certain reasons. And uh, yeah, I think swing. you've got to swing. You've got to swing hard. And I think um, you should never really be that consistent with your voting because... I know we vote for a party in this country, but you do also vote for a prime minister yeah. or a president 
or a dictator or whatever. Sometimes that one issue is really the most important thing for you. There have been elections where there's been no good choice. Mm. Um, that's, that's a tough situation. But it's compulsory voting here in Australia. We all get, get to have a say. So. But we've also had some left liberals and we've had some right Labor. Labors, and that's going to really confuse our international listeners because the words are different here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like you've got to just vote with your heart. Go on the surface, right? You know, they love the hairstyle. Take it. <laughs> so is that how Boris and Trump got in? <laughs> just great, great heads of hair. Best hairs going around. Yeah, I think that's, that's what it comes down to. Because we've had some bald guys get in. Yeah, you don't, you don't see a lot of them. I don't know what... Uh, Who's the Labor guy? No, Liberal guy now, Peter Dutton. I don't, don't know. Yeah. Yeah, don't see a lot of guys without much hair. Get, I think it's mean through. when they make fun of people's appearances like that. Like people call him Voldemort. That that is a bit personal. Yes. Yeah, like it's just rude. <laughs> yep. It's like uh, unless you're a mate of Peter's and you've got rapport and you're doing a, a roast battle with him. Yeah. Look, I, I think anybody in politics is is willing to be a, a target, and uh, sometimes mm. things cross the line, and you've got to have a thick skin. So I'm sure he's man enough to handle that. I was my my uh, my art my art um, style of choice was cartoons, and I probably I, at one stage I was going to become a professional cartoonist, and um, but I wasn't great. At doing politicians and that's where all the money is that's where all the work is yeah the newspapers so i could do howard i could do um well you know i we didn't have trump back then but i'm sure i could have drawn trump pretty yeah. easily but then a few just plain looking people came through what do you do with albanese yeah yeah, yeah. you know you can't do much with him except put a south sat on him and call it a day but that's where the talent is. These cartoonists that are able to work out like, okay, they've got this tiny little feature here and I'm going to emphasize it. But then sometimes they get in trouble for doing that. That, that nose is too big. Oh, those lips are too big. The, the King Charles ears. Those, those sausage fingers. <laughs> yes. Are, are way too large. Like these, these are humans, guys. They have feelings. And that's why I never cut it as a cartoonist. I'm just too nice. <laughs> Lost talent. Lost talent. <laughs> um, so, in terms of your body surfing dreams for the future, Gareth, you came into the Budgie Boys this year. You got a podium finish at the Australian Body Surfing Classics competing with the Budgie Boys. You're a third place goal... What do you call it? A third place medalist. A bronze medalist in the only team event for body surfing. Where do you go from here? Look, I, I guess for me, it's all about the love of the sport and that was just one of those moments in time and I'm, I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. I don't have goals for my body surfing. I'm just, just going to keep having fun doing it. If that's a goal, then that's my goal. Let's set some goals. Oh, here we go. It's a meeting. Goal number one. So we'll do three goals. Yep. Goal number one, have fun. Totally. Goal number two, would you like to go into an individual event? I'm not a naturally competitive person, so I, I, if it's going to you know, be fun, I would do it. If I was there to, to uh, you know, try and, let's be real, I'm not going to win a competition, but you know, <laughs> I could go in to make up the numbers. If I've got a mate who's running a comp and they need somebody to do it, that, that would be my motivation. I think most comps are fun. So yeah. you're definitely doing it for the fun. Some comps might be a little bit more competitive than others. Some comps might be a little bit more professional than others. So yeah, definitely just choose the one that fits you and, and go for it. it. It could be pipeline. Look, I would have been just happy turning up at ABC this year to, to sit and watch some of the great body surfers that were there. I'd never even known that Wompoff was a thing in the past and, and uh, I, I was just planning on turning up so it was great to, to be part of a team and to be able to do it. So I think, um, you know, if you do join and, and go in a comp, the, one of the real buzzers is getting to see those really great guys in the water and what they can do. Mm. So, all right, number one, have, have fun. fun. Number two, individual comp. That's a goal now. <laughs> in brackets, still having fun. Yep, yep. And then number three. 
be really great to come up with a move that could be named after yourself or you know people know that that's your signature move it doesn't have yeah. to be named after you but you know innovation mm, the rusty trombone hey yeah there we go <laughs> nailed it in one um, might leave a stain in the water <laughs> I thought that was a trombone sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> That's for editing later. <laughs> well, I think we might wrap it up there. Can't top that. You're meant to panel out on, on a laugh and uh, you can't get a bigger laugh than staining <laughs> the water with a rusty <laughs> trombone. <laughs> Apologies to the young ones who are listening. Don't Google that. <laughs> <laughs> Was this episode filthy or was is, was uh, that just my... Yeah. We, we covered a few bases, yeah. I, I think it was a filthy episode. Okay. Because we will get some letters. Uh, Thebodysurfpodcast.com. Click on the feedback icon. Let us know if this episode was too filthy. Because it is a family-friendly show. Although I noticed the other day I was looking at it on one of the podcast apps and it said explicit. We're just helping that out. But I, this is my rule. Any, You can say the S word, you can say the F word. I'll never beep that out. But if you say the C word, I'll beep that out. That's just my rule. And I thought that was sort of the rule here in Australia. <laughs> I guess not. Because <laughs> <laughs> Dane Torres said fuck and he was like so apologetic. But in America, Different standards, yeah. you, can't, you can't say that. It, it's definitely shifting. Give it two or three years and I think maybe they'll remove that explicit tag. It, the words have changed. So poo is now crap. Crap is now shit. Shit is now fuck. Fuck is now see. What comes after that? We've got nowhere to it's go. It's not there yet. Mm. This turned into, um, who was that guy who did the word you can't say? Prolific stand-up comedian, had a beard, George Carlin. Ah. <laughs> this has just turned into a George Carlin set. When you sit with a chaplain, that's what you get. <laughs> a silent a silent <laughs> guy? <laughs> I would have loved to have... Did, so, like, there's recordings of Chaplin talking, yeah? Somewhere. I was... I was <laughs> Charlie Chaplin. I was talking about Chaplin of the body of uh, the Budgie Boys, but uh, yeah, let's go Charlie Chaplin. Who's Chaplin of the Budgie Boys? Uh, let's roll back the tape. I thought I was just made the uh, the the, padre, the Chaplin. The chaplain. Oh. We were talking about this at the pawn shop when um, a play on words or a pun is too close to the original. Yep. You really need to emphasize it. So, what was the spell example? It out. It's yeah. the hashtag. You missed the hashtag and the line. Yeah. You've got to either hyphenate it or put in the hashtag. But yeah, there was a record in the in the pawn shop, and it was like a play on words. But it was also just like no one would know because yeah. it was just it's also just a word. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but Chaplin and Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin, the Chaplin of the, the Bunchy Boys. Actor. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Charlie he's Chaplin. he's a great listener. <laughs> <laughs> Marcel Marceau, maybe. Yeah. We're wrapping this up, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we could have panelled out so hard with a Sydney traffic uh, when we did the rusty trombone bit, but uh, instead we've ruined it with mentioning George Carlin and Charlie Chaplin and all these people that we will never become. So thank you for listening to another episode of the Body Surf Podcast. We've got to get out of here for now, but we've still got a lot more coming your way this year. So stay tuned and then we'll be back with summer series uh, to sort of wrap things up and get us into the new year. So we got to get out of here, do it again real soon. But for now, remember, it's always overhead when you're body surfing. Bye. Yo.